So this piece of cardio equipment is probably the most recognizable in, in almost every gym around the world. The treadmill, it's great for low impact walking on an incline to a jog to a sprint. So I'm just going to show you now how to set this up. When you first got the treadmill, you'll press start or quick start. Then we have various options on here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed and we're just going to do it to a slow, steady walk. So maybe we're going to put that to around about 2.5 miles an hour. From there, we can either increase or decrease the incline. So if we want to walk uphill, we'll simply press the incline up button and we're going to take that up to level three. Studies show that walking on an incline can burn up to twice as many calories as you do when you're walking on a flat. And a treadmill is a great way for you to come in, warm up, cool down, or even do a full cardio-based workout. That's a demonstration of a walk. If we were going to go into a slight jog, we'll just put the treadmill up to about 5.3 miles an hour, which will just force you into a slight run. Once you've done that, it's really simple. You can either slow it down and go down to a slow walk again, or if at that point you want to stop the treadmill, just simply press the stop button, or in an emergency, pull the cord off, which will completely stop the treadmill right there. This next exercise is probably one of my favorite for quads, and I either use it to pre-exhaust or to burn out. Generally use it as the first exercise or as the last one. So it's called the leg extension and it really isolates the quads. Your foot position can determine which section of the quad that you're targeting. So I'm gonna show you now my favorite position to do this. So, first thing we're gonna do is get our feet under the pad and we're gonna slightly point our toes out over. Now, as she kicks this up, we're imagining that her toes are getting thrown all over the top of her shoulders. So can you see her foot position? So she's bringing it up and she's imagining that them feet are going over the top of her shoulders. This is a great way to really contract them quad muscles. So we're gonna go down. And we're always gonna remember that as we go down, so you take that up, Ash. As we go down, we're gonna go down as if our finger's in there and that's the depth that we're gonna go down to and back up again. We're not gonna let the plates touch, but we're also not gonna take it just a little bit down. So as we come up, we're gonna get up and we're gonna put the power through our legs. Almost so, this part of the quad can lift off the pad. Can you see that? She'll take it up and this part of the hamstring lifts off the pad. Okay, so this exercise is a walking dumbbell lunge. And slightly different to the standing dumbbell lunge. We're only gonna take one dumbbell, but we're gonna place it above our head, which really, really emphasizes the importance of having your balance right on this. So you can either do this with a dumbbell, you can do it without a dumbbell, or you can do it with a dumbbell in each hand. It's a lot harder with the dumbbell above your head, but for this exercise, I'm gonna show you the hardest way. So notice what Ashley's doing here. She's placing her feet back together on every step. She's not going from left foot to right foot, she's starting at the same position again. Turn around. So notice how she's doing this here. She's not taking a massively long stride, but that dumbbell hasn't left the position. And that's putting a, a great load onto the target area on this, on this exercise. And can you see how tight her core is when she's doing this as well? And that's because of the position of the dumbbell and the fact that she has to remain balanced. A walking dumbbell lunge is a fantastic exercise that should definitely be included in a leg workout. Okay guys, so this is a 45 degree leg press. So we're putting the emphasis on our quads. So our foot position is really important in this. We're gonna put our feet position a little bit closer than we generally would, just to try and put the stress and the emphasis onto the quads. So to get started, she'll do a full extension. 
And what she'll do here is she'll almost flare her knees out, which will allow the break at the hips. So it won't put too much stress on the knees. So she'll take it down and she'll push it up. And all the time she's driving through the heels of her feet. So again, she's flaring her knees out. And that's allowing her to break at the hips, which is removing any stress from the knee. Now a good way to see what depth you want to come down on this is either to make sure that that part of the quad touches the tummy, as it does, or by placing your hands across your chest onto your shoulders, like that, and then bringing your knees down so they touch your elbows. And that's a great reference point to know that you've come down far enough, because some people will only come down by three or four inches to, from here to there, and they'll load the weight up so they think they're really strong, but really there's no benefit to the quads. The only thing that's benefiting is the ego. So again, up and down, and every time she's pushing the weight through the heels of her feet. And finally, just to finish, if she grabs all the handles again, she'll get some reps going out. And they're really, really important. And the key element of this is never, ever, ever lock them legs. We've all seen the YouTube videos where the leg locks and it snaps. Please don't ever lock them legs. Keep the weight through the heels. Keep your knees pointing out over and take it up just before your knees lock to get enough emphasis onto the quads and to protect them knees. It's really, really important. Give me two more reps, Ash. Breathe out now. In as you go down. Out. This is a great way for anybody who struggles to do conventional squats in a squat rack. It's called a V-squat. And it's a great way to, to be able to do a squat in a safe manner and really try and develop, even if you haven't got an injury and you really want to put your quads under maximum tension, this is a fantastic machine. This is made by Hammer Strength, but there's a lot of different brands out there. So we'll place our back against the pad and our shoulders underneath. She'll, if you notice her foot position, she's going to be just slightly short of shoulder width apart and the toes are going to be pointing nice and straight. If we stand up now, that's locked her off. So what she's going to do now again, She's going to splay her knees out over, which allows her to open up at the hips. If she keeps her knees pointing in over, she doesn't engage her hips. She needs to bring them knees out over, so it allows the depth of that squat to go down. And again, she's driving all the force through the heels of the feet and up through there as well. Now, a way, if you're going quite light, you probably wouldn't get this if it was heavy, a way to treat, really try and emphasize these quads is when she's going at the top, so we'll do it on the next rep, so she'll go down, as she comes up, she'll lift them heels off, which will really emphasize that quad without having to lock out them knees fully. And it's just a matter of lifting them off and straight back down again. And again, just key points on this, so we'll just keep our feet flat for now. So key points on this, make sure our knees are coming slightly out over, which allows us to open up at the hips to take the depth of that squat, because if you don't, it's a really, 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 con it's a really compact position. And we're breathing out as we're at the top, and we're going down. And just notice how far down she's going. She's going down enough, so her glutes are probably just about in line with the back of the kneecap. Okay, so this is a sissy squat. Don't let that name make you think that it's an easy exercise because it's really, really not. So as we placed our feet in here, we need to make sure that we're locked in. So that's nice and tight because this is going to be the only position that is securing you from falling over. So once we've done that, we're going to allow our calf to sit against the back pad. Now, if we just watch as Ash goes into a squat position, she's going to lean back. She's dropping a glute down. And then instead of pushing her shoulders up to the top like that, which is rested, she's going to keep the emphasis on the quad. So to do that, she's going to go down and she's going to push her shoulders up there. Then back down again and really push up through them heels. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze and down. And notice how she's still then back over, which is putting extra stress onto them quads because if she was to do it the wrong way which we'll do next time one more and do it the wrong way she's rested there so there's no longer any resistance on her quads so finally we'll just do two or three reps ash so get up do it as you normally would squeeze one that's it properly our way up two 
one more ash. Up, 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 squeeze. That's it. Well done. That's the sissy squat. It is a brutal exercise. And we like to use this as probably the last exercise in a leg workout, just to finish them, just to really, really get maximum blood flow to them quads. And it's a great finisher exercise. But I repeat, do not let the name sissy squat make you think that it's an easy exercise because it's probably the complete opposite. So this isn't seen in every gym around the world, but it's an absolutely fantastic piece of cardio equipment. It's called the Stairmaster, and it can be absolutely brutal, but so rewarding. You see a lot of professional athletes, particularly bodybuilders, bikini girls, who absolutely love this for the, for the simple fact that it puts a good emphasis on your glutes while you're doing it. So when you do get on this Stairmaster, just press the green button in front of you, what that'll do, it'll release the brake off the revolving staircase. Now, the staircase will move dependent on the user's weight. And all you're going to do is by turning the level up, is release the brake a little bit more, which will allow the revolving staircase to revolve that little bit faster. Ashley uses this daily, so she's a seasoned pro on this machine, and she loves it. There's various ways you can use it. You can use it a single step at a time, or she could go on a two steps at a time. So now her feet will miss one tread and take two steps up. You could make it even more advanced by doing a glute kickback as you're stepping up the steps. As I said, this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit. And if your gym's got one, you're a really lucky person, so make the most of this. Don't be afraid of it. Start off if you can do one minute and then work your way up to two minutes. And what sometimes we do is we'll do a period of time on this and we'll then put somebody off it, back onto the treadmill and then come back on again. So that way they can work the way up to a level. Uh, Ashley's currently doing around about one hour solid on this. Now, myself, I'll probably do about three or four minutes. It's a hard piece of equipment, but so rewarding and so, so, so beneficial to anybody. So I would definitely recommend that you definitely give this a go, give it a try, don't be afraid of it. And just to finish this one off, Ashley's gonna turn the speed up and she's gonna show you now how she can get into a run. And just note this fact as well, on this particular Stairmaster, in the top left-hand corner, there's a picture of a fan. If she presses the picture of the fan, that'll blow cold air at her face. So she's gonna get into a run. As you do get more experience on this, you'll be able to leave go of the handles, but I would recommend you always stay within a balance. As you can see now, Ashley's actually into a run where her arms are moving as well. As her arms are moving, she's burning more calories because more parts of her body are moving. Again, once you're finished on the Stairmaster even, again, press the big red button in front of you and that'll apply the brake to the staircase and allow you to safely dismount and move on to the next exercise.